In the last video, I was kind of trying to get at the point that a company may not be able to collect every single receivable and that all sales that they make are not going to be good sales. So you may have to, or you're going to have to make an estimation for uncollectibles because certain companies will have a certain amount of receivables that will not be collected even if you don't have an easy credit policy. If you even have some kind of uh, relatively conservative interest rate and, and fair credit policy, there may still be defaults on some of the sales you make. And of course, when sales default, those receivables will not be collected. And because of that, Accounts receivables will be overstated. So we need accounts receivables to be at its actual transparent value. So we need an account that's going to adjust accounts receivables to bring it to its fair value. And we're actually going to be talking about that account in just a second. But I also wanted to say that net income as well is going to be, it's going to be overstated because if we don't report, if we don't have this estimation, if we don't have this estimation here, we're not going to record an expense for uncollectibles. And without that expense, our net income isn't going to go down. It's going to remain overstated. So our, our balance sheet is going to be overstated and so will our income statement. So we need two accounts that are going to fairly bring these values back down to um, their true values or what they should be at. So the first account that's going to affect accounts receivables and that's going to, or actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about net income first. So the account that is going to bring net income down to its, its real value is the accounts known as bad debts expense. So when we when we debit an expense, of course, this increases an expense. So our bad debts uh, expense is going up. And of course, this is going to bring net income back down. In that way, uh, when we debit it for a certain amount, it will bring it from an overstated value to its actual value. So that is going to be an expense, and we know expense is lower net income. And what are we going to do to accounts receivables? We have to have an account that affects the, the balance sheet. So we can't use an expense or a revenue because those are not accounts that are going to affect the balance sheet. Those only show up on the income statement. So we're going to need an account that will, that will fix our accounts receivable number. And that's going to be a contra account known as allowance for doubtful accounts. And basically what that means is it means that um, this is an account just for, for accounts that will not be collected. We're making an allowance. Like if you remember as a kid, um, you, were, you were paid an allowance kind of on a, on a regular interval on week one week two, you receive the same allowance, week three, week four, maybe you didn't receive an allowance, but I'm just saying um, some kids in their childhood, they receive an allowance. So it's regular for a company. I'm just going to draw a building to represent a company. It's regular for a company to create an allowance for bad debts, since they also will be as regular as an allowance is for a kid. So they'll have to um, report the bad debts expense or account for an allowance in each period, not just one period, in all the periods that they make sales. And they're either going to use uh, one method, which is known as the sales method, or the second one, which is known as the receivables method. But we're not gonna be talking about that in this video. We'll be talking about that in the next two videos, one, one for each. But I just wanted to show that uh, the bad debts expense, what this is going to do is it's going to match our expense to the revenues that we earn. So we're going to have matching 
because if you remember the matching principle, we're supposed to match our expenses with all the revenues earned. So this fairly uh, matches our expenses to our, our sales. And we also are going to have a net realizable value for accounts receivables by having this contra account known as allowance for doubtful accounts because that's going to bring our accounts receivables to its net realizable value. So having this entry right here is going to basically is going to basically bring our accounts receivables and net income to their rightful values. And I just wanted to remind you one last time that this is a contra account and what a contra account is is it's just a, an account that that completely offsets another account. So whenever, let's say accounts receivables, we have 600,000, and then we have a contra account, which is allowance for doubtful accounts. It offsets accounts receivables, so if we have 20,000 that we think will be uncollectible, our final AR value will be 580,000. And contra accounts always are next to the account that they pertain to on the balance sheet. So hopefully I kind of conveyed the allowance method well. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about the sales method and the receivables method in the next two videos. I'll see you guys then. Make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, Thanks for watching us on YouTube.